snow is just as hot as its name suggests. A steamy, somewhat shabby state in Mexico's deep south. Uh, this hotel was for Carlos Caval until he the, 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 the problem the he had to sell. Reveals the most famous name in town is Caval. Okay, this is the street sometimes we call the Carlos Caval Street because he, he has uh, many, many business here. You can see it's a, a very nice building that it's a most beautiful building at the city of Villahermosa to us uh, from Carlos Caval. Carlos Cabal is the man who, they say, broke the bank Mexico. How do you plead? to these charges of fraud and embezzlement? They are uh, totally uh, baseless and false charges. of the local banana producers and a staunch cabal supporter. Nosotros en, en Tabasco quisiéramos que no nada más hubiera un Carlos Cabal, que hubiera unos 10 Carlos Cabal para que Tabasco se fuera más alto o llegáramos a prosperar más rápido. And it wasn't just the banana men who backed the young hotshots. The early 90s were Mexico's glory days. The economy was being reformed and privatized. Entrepreneurs were heroes. Cabal was praised and promoted by Mexico's then president, Carlos Salinas. And he enjoyed a close alliance with Salinas's chosen successor, Luis Colosio. Puesto que las mismas autoridades lo presentaron con nosotros, nos invitaron las autoridades federales a invertir con él y a pedir que el sureste invirtiera en los bancos y en el banco de Carlos Cabal. This is Carlos Cabal today. He has no banks, no political protectors. He faces jail over a complex raft of tax fraud and banking charges involving around $700 million in bad loans. Loans which it's alleged he made to himself. Carlos Cabal denies everything, concedes nothing. No, no, I will fight this to the end. I have to prove my innocence. I owe that to my family. I owe that to my friends. So I have to fight it to the end. For a man on bail of just under $500 million, Carlos Cabal lives in high style, in an elegant Mexico City apartment with his wife Teresa and their four children. There he enjoys good food, fine wine, and the support of those who never doubt, like his eldest daughter, 17-year-old Sophia. Well, I, I do believe he's totally innocent. I don't know why exactly it happened. Um, you know, people say things happen for the best, and I believe that's true, because right now we're all happy together. We're all really happy to be with all our relatives, all our cousins, my grandmother and everyone. I think they love me still, and I'm very proud of that, and I'm very happy with my family. Estados Unidos? La <laughs> coalición. Cabal rarely leaves his apartment except when he must to fight his many court cases. Out there in the real world, the man from Tabasco is neither safe nor popular.
When people say that you were partly responsible for the collapse of the Mexican economy, what's your response? That is not true. They, they are not well informed. That was part of a campaign of, of that this political persecution that I suffer. And they use all the press to say, look, this is the guilty one for the collapse of the economy, which is ridiculous. But why does everyone remember you? It was very easy for them just to to choose one of the, let's say, youngest, newest, or, or, or maybe weakest uh, bankers at that moment, and it was me. Cabal's bank was among the first to fail, but others followed, collapsing like cars. Mexico teetered on the brink of bankruptcy. The economic disaster exposed a deeply corrupt political regime. The best gauge of how things were done in Mexico, the story which gives a real smell of the times, concerns the private, in fact secret dinner party held here at the home of the former finance minister. The 1994 elections were still 18 months off but the government, the PRI, wanted campaign funds. So they pressed the billionaires. What were they prepared to cough up? 25 million US dollars each. Well, you have to get along well with that party. Otherwise, it was going to be very difficult for you to do business in Mexico. So you had to try always to get along well with the people in power, yes. Por la presidencia de México! Cabal always did get along, until this. The assassination of Luis Colosio, the candidate he supported to the tune of $15 million. $15 million is a yes. lot of support. Yes, it is. We were a lot of businessmen behind this amount, so... What did you think, hope, you'd get in return? Well, what I was expecting is that this candidate would develop our region, the southeast of Mexico. That's what I was expecting. Cabal didn't give $15 million to the new candidates, the Dino, but he became president. Federal authorities moved on Carlos Cabal's companies in Tabasco, the end of the banks, and the banana bonanza. What would you say is the average person, the average Mexican's view of Carlos Cabal? Uh, what do they think? Corrupt guy who got away with it, basically. It's momento de volver a Mexico, which means time to return to, to Mexico. Business journalist Victor Fuentes has covered his, uh, the Cabal story since the mid-90s, when it became the hottest story in Mexico, and, even it was a and one of the most complex. It is no doubt the biggest white-collar story that, has, that Mexico has seen in the last 20 or 30 years. He's the one who has faced more charges, more accusations against him. We're talking almost 20 accusations have been filed at court against him at some moment or the other. Uh, also, the amount of money that was involved, uh, yeah, he was alleged to loan close to 700 million US dollars to companies related to him or to his family. He says, of course, that he was the victim of a conspiracy, of a vendetta. I think it's a combination of a banker uh, doing uh, operations that are questionable and also of a political system that at some point decides, you know what, let's take this guy, let's make an, exa an example out of him. Maybe even as a political vendetta, I, I couldn't be sure of that, but I think it's a combination of both elements. At the crucial moment, as disgrace and arrest loomed, Carlos Cabal fled Mexico, simply disappeared, turning up over the years with and without his family in France, Spain, Italy and Latin America. In late 1996, Rafael Certi Merit touched down in Australia. You 
entered Australia on a false name. It was, as you've explained, an amalgam of family names, but nonetheless, it was not your real-born name. On a different name, yes. Frankly, didn't that make you look like a crook? Well, I never acted as a crook. I was having a normal life. Uh, we were all the same. We were not doing any illegal thing. Uh, we were respecting all the laws. Well, yes, we had the different name. That's what we had. That day, oh, I remember it so well. Um, I remember we went to school that morning because he always used to go for a run every morning before school. We went to school and um, and then after school, I remember one of the lawyers picking us up. Me and my sisters were really, really worried. We didn't know what's, what was fully going on and I remember we were crying the whole afternoon. So that was that was really bad. And then, and then that was it. And then the day after that, it all came out in the news and the newspapers. Ravello. For generations, Ravello have been selecting only the very best Italian produce for their famous range of fine foods. This was Cabal's in a word, Australian they swan must be song. perfect. The ad for a pasta company. Which we can was all to be enjoy this noble tradition venture. with the superb range of Ravello foods now available in Australia. He's a con man, but I think he's also a natural born businessman. And that became very clear for me in Australia. You know, he's being prosecuted, the Interpol is looking for him, and, and he has a temerity of actually starting a business there, you know? And as an Italian? Yeah, as an Italian. Selling you know? pasta. An Italian business selling pasta and olive oil. I find that very interesting about the guy, you know, because it gives you the impression that the guy, he never give up, he will never give up uh, as far as uh, doing business and trying to create profit will go, so. Australia now turned very sour for Carlos Cabal. He was locked in the maximum security section of Port Phillip Jail, shackled when he went to court. I don't think they need to put shackles to nobody unless there is a violent or crazy people. Who were you sharing that section of the jail with? Oh, there were a lot of, uh, I think, uh, never to be released uh, criminals, murderers and all kind of, of people, so... Uh, Listen, I've been charged, but I have never uh, been proven guilty. I have never been sentenced of any offense or, or, or of any of those charges. For three years, he fought against his extradition. But these surely are not the actions of an innocent man. When you have to protect the life of your family, you have to do anything to do it. It was a different Mexico. It was a lot of killing, a lot of murdering and uh, I have been threatened. I guess it's, it's a big lie. So it, there's no reason he ever had no, to be afraid it's, for his it's, life? It's like a, a system that they use. I, Agustin I, we de Pavia is Mexico's most senior international prosecutor. From... He'd been chasing Gabal since 1998 and was among those waiting when the fugitive voluntarily returned from Australia. He was the favorite entrepreneur of President Salinas. And I guess he thought he'll never been uh, taken to justice. Is he a crook? Yes, he is. Should he be behind bars? Yes. Is he a thief? Well, he's a, a very elegant thief. So uh, he, he doesn't have a, a gun. But uh, he has experts in order to say, well, Let's handle the, the money of the people this way so we can divert this money for our own purposes. The massive bailout of the banks cost Mexico's taxpayers some $90 billion. And collectively, they're still paying that bill today. But 
individual suffered too. Lourdes Verdine, for instance, who took out a mortgage with one of the last cabal of banks. Yo compré mi casa en Banca Crem. El costo de mi casa costó 36.414 millones. That's around $12,000. It's a modest house in a struggling neighborhood. The water here runs for just two hours a day, from 2 to 4 a.m. It's a question. But Lourdes is a proud owner and made regular monthly repayments. Pues, pues es que es todo, es todo para nosotros. Es un patrimonio. No, pues que no puede explicar todo lo que significa para, para nuestra familia y para mí. As the banks fell, the interest rates rose astronomically. Last year, the new owners of Banco Cremi told Lourdes she must find the money, by now 10 times the purchase price, or she would lose the house. If you could speak to Carlos Cabal, what would you say to him? Pues, pues que devuelva lo que se llevó y que ayude a los de la, a los de que se deben casas. Entre topes. Sí, ya, pero ya está horrible. Carlos Cabal, meanwhile, fights his own battles. He employs 23 lawyers, some to defend him, others to prosecute his case for compensation. His bail is far and away the highest ever demanded in Mexico. And, the prosecutors say, it needs to be. If he's not going to lose big money and he finds out, and he has good lawyers, that he is going to end up in jail, he may fly away again, and, and it's going to be impossible to find him. So it's not punitive, it's to hold him here? It's to hold him. You wouldn't run away again? No. No. Well, I, if I was in his situation, I would say the same, right? But he's a liar. <laughs> How important is it to you to be declared an innocent man? Very important the most important thing in my life. Very, very important. For my family, I, I think I have, to, I have to get that. What about for yourself? Yes, for myself too, but uh, I believe I have a responsibility. As I'm telling you, I have a son that is named like me, so I, I really think that I have to fix that. probably never know the full truth about the man in Tabasco. Almost 10 years have flowed under the bridge. As for the money, who knows where that's gone. But if Carlos Cabal does escape conviction and imprisonment, he plans to return to the South to reignite the banana business and to retrieve what he can of his life and his reputation. <laughs>